Welcome back everyone to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from my usual content. If you have been watching my content, you're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit different from my usual event based videos. But then again, come on, I only got five subs. Who's going to watch my videos? Hmm. Anyhow, so today we'll be talking about ecotourism and also the concept of revenue retention or also known as tourism leakage in the concept of tourism and also ecotourism. So what exactly is ecotourism? Well, ecotourism is defined by the International Ecotourism Society, also known as TIES, as going traveling to in natural areas, conserving the natural areas as well, and also improving the well-being of locals. We will be talking about this at a future time, so please do remember this. So for those who doesn't know, Mr. Bruce Poontip, the founder of G Adventures, was able to come to my school and talk about G Adventures, some of these problems with mass tourism and some ways to mitigate it. We at Pacific Asia Travel Association, Capilano University, Vancouver student chapter was lucky to have him in for a private interview, which he talked about mass tourism, some of the issues with it and some ways that his company was able to mitigate it. The links will be provided down below in the description box below once that has been released. Back to the topic. So what exactly did Mr. Prunta talk about? One thing that he talked about during his presentation was the idea of revenue retention in a host community. For every $100 that is spent at a country, only $5 stays within that community. So obviously going off USD. This is also referenced in a report by the United Nations Environmental Program. So you might be wondering, how is this an issue? So how this is an issue is that because you're basically going to someone else's area, someone else's environment, destroying them, taking their resources, and they're getting nothing from it. They're not benefiting at all. In addition, it was found that tourists actually use more resources while traveling than while they are actually at home or staying within their home country. You might be using five times more water when you're at another place. So this is referenced in Martha Honey's book, which is called Ecotourism and Sustainable Development. So let's say we have a random person just off the street come into your house and took everything out of your fridge. That would include the 20 avocados because Millennials. But anyhow, they have taken everything from your fridge and you're left with nothing but a $5. So let's imagine the fridge as the environment and you are the community itself. You are left with this damage of having an empty fridge, which is meaning which can be deprived of its resources and you have to clean it up with what, $5? That's definitely not gonna be a worthy trade for anybody to, with the right mind to even accept. Well, why is this happening? Well, some of the reasons why would be because tourists actually chose big international companies because they recognize the name brand. So what happened is that you get these massive international companies and their headquarters are not within the company, the community itself. So because of that, well, the money will eventually trickle down from that country all the way to its home base, which is obviously not in that country or the community itself. So let's step back a bit and let's say you want to go to Nepal for one day. Obviously it's not going to happen, but for example's sake, let's go with it. So let's say you're going to Nepal for one day and you chose to go with a local tourism company, a travel agency that's just right around the corner. So they happen to have one day trips with to Nepal, coincidence obviously, but you purchased that tour with them. So let's just say you purchase the package for a hundred dollars. So you have officially deprived the community by a hundred dollars. So continuing on, you have landed and it's noon. So you want to get a little bit of food. You decided to choose McDonald's just for example's sake. So McDonald's, let's say they don't employ locals and you spent seven dollars over there. Well, you just deprived the entire community by another seven dollars but well since this is in the 2000s then there will be more benefits for the local community but for the time's sake let's just say it is in the 2000s and there is no benefits for the community from this interaction moving on we are now getting towards night and you're getting tired you choose to stay at the uh, travel agency's hotel that they have designated you that luxury five-star hotel that is just 
right beside the beach. So you decided to choose there instead of choosing a nice local homestay. So that means that you have deprived the community of maybe another $50 that could have potentially went there. I know you got it as a package deal, but for example's sake, let's go with that. Now in total, you are looking at roughly about $167 in total of your entire trip that would could have gone to the community but did not so between the restaurant and also the hotel that you'll be staying in you actually choose to take the charter provided by the private company that you have purchased with now what does that mean that means you have deprived the company of ten dollars just because you chose a private charter over a local transportation. That means that you just add another $10 to that bill of yours and you're looking at $175. Now, if you look at it, $175, probably nothing in your uh, eyes. However, to these communities, it is huge. Every dollar counts. Now, if you times that by how many people actually travels, then you're getting at an absurd amount of money. For example, Nepal actually hit 1.1 million travelers in 2018 first time they ever got over 1 million travelers so if you take that 1.1 million people times that by 175 you're getting a figure of 192.5 million dollars that could have gone into the economy that is huge in addition you are actually just staying for one night and all these numbers are just fictional so obviously it's going to be become greater it might even go up to half a billion dollars so basically the amount of money that would have stayed within the host country would have been a lot more than that 192 million dollars so let's pull back to the concept of ecotourism as i stated ecotourism is talking about traveling to natural areas conserving the, these natural areas and environment and also improving the well-being of the local people so the one that we will be talking about would be number three which is improving the well-being of the local people. If ecotourism does not benefit the the people, then it is not called ecotourism. Simple, blunt, easy. So how does this work in regards to ecotourism and also with revenue retention? The way it is, is that if the money does not benefit the locals, then it is not ecotourism. If you are choosing to go on an ecotourism tour, make sure that the money actually stays within the host community and also benefits their local people. However, fortunately, we are actually lucky enough to be living in 2019 where most multinational companies actually have thought of this and have provided initiatives. Companies like G Adventures through their Planetario Foundation and also with the Travel Group who owns Kentucky and also the Treadride Foundation. These companies are actually able to provide some level of benefits towards their locals. Even McDonald's actually provide benefits to the locals by employing locals and also sourcing their food locally. Did you know that McDonald's Canada actually sourced their potatoes from Alberta and then distribute it all over the country? Well, they do. That is actually one thing that McDonald's do that is actually beneficial. So going back, she Adventures actually focus on having small travel sizes. So that means that they have travel sizes of roughly 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 30, 30 being maximum people going on a trip. So that actually minimizes the amount of trash and also the noise that is created by these tourists. They also use local transportation and also local leaderies to make sure that these local businesses actually get a chunk of the tourism dollars. Now, Mr. Bruce Puntip actually mentions one thing that he actually realized while on his journey towards creating this massive company of his. So what he touched upon was that he actually did a audit of every business partner that his company was doing and he found out that some companies were actually not even providing these benefits to the locals, which I will talk about later. The travel group partnered up with the One Tree Planted Foundation, which for every person who travels under a subsidiary of the travel corporation who uses their electronic travel documents, one tree will be planted because, well, you're saving that tree and second, you're getting another tree back. So why not? So what are some benefits of 
choosing local companies over these massive international companies? Well, according to the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, or ILSR, that would mean the local empowerment, the money stays within the host community, the creation of jobs, the entrepreneurship that would have been fostered, the public benefits, and it also fosters healthy communication. All these will greatly benefit the locals and their economy. So you may be wondering, well, I'm going to be backpacking or going by myself. So what can I do? Well, it's simple. Research, research, and research. Research into the company you'll be staying with. Rather, that will be a local company or a multinational company. Choose wisely. Make sure that a company is local or a company that actually may be headquartered outside of the country, but provide sustainable practices and also financial benefits towards the host community. Rather, that can be employing locals, empowering locals, direct financial benefits towards these host communities, or direct financial benefits towards the conservation. So these are some of the things that you can look out for when you're choosing companies. However, be aware that some companies may seem like it's a local, like a restaurant that may be serving Japanese food in Japan. However, it may be owned by a company that is maybe, let's say, in the UK. So these things are some things you should look out for. Definitely do your research on who you're staying with and if they actually practice these sustainable practices and if they are actually authentically local and owned by a local person. All right, guys, so this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you guys like it, give it a boom thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more content like this, even though this is more of a one-off. If you guys want more, please do comment down below. Also, please make sure to talk about what I did wrong, what I could have included, maybe what I did right. Thank you so much, and until next time, never stop living.